Good morning, everyone. My name is Priya Samant, and I am a CEO and co-founder of Abris, based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. But my homeland is India. My motherland is India. I'm sorry. So um, uh, this topic of discussion is women in Web3 space in emerging economies. Women are leading the evolution of the Web3 ecosystem globally from leadership roles in tech to management. Web 3.0 has far more women at the helm than the Web 1.0 and 2.0 had put together. The word Web 3 sounds very fancy and intimidating and cryptic, but in tech term, it's a new iteration or avatar of the World Wide Web that holds decentralized uh, applications which run on the blockchain technology. Today, I have the honor of interacting with four women who are transforming art, movies, online communities in this emerging Web3 space. So I would like to um, start this conversation with our very lovely guest from India, Maina Mukherjee. Maina, uh, you know, because uh, time is of very sense for us here, I have your um, all your uh, esteemed company only for 45 minutes. So in a TV style, uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Priya, uh, for inviting me to the panel. My name is Maina Mukherjee. Um, I'm a cultural producer and curator, I'm also the director of our arts and human rights organization. Uh, that's a transnational arts and human rights organization that was founded in New York and now has been in India for the past seven years. It's called Engendered. That, in a nutshell, is a very brief sort of uh, background. Wonderful. So Maina, tell me, you, we, we just spoke about it and uh, you mentioned you were in the U.S. for 24 years, right? So from being uh, from Wall Street to being immersed in street art and then from being a global art curator to creating a space for voices which are seldom heard, how has your journey been, for, been so far? Uh, Priya, you know, one of my favorite art, uh, one of my favorite authors said that a self that goes on changing is a self that goes on living. And I've had several lives. Um, but the truth is that even though these lives seem very disparate, uh, every one of them has informed the other one. And so it's been sort of an alchemy that has been paid forward. Um, so I, I was went to college for a technology, to a very technical school, Carnegie Mellon, uh, studied information systems and finance there, study, went to Wall Street for about seven years, uh, started a feminist dance theater company in New York, um, and then uh, started organizing festivals as a cultural producer for uh, in places like the Lincoln Center, um, you know, OMA, all sorts of places. So uh, one of the things that is interesting for me to see is that um, my time in the boardroom of corporate, of corporate boardrooms as a brown immigrant woman uh, taught me a lot about uh, representation, gender, identity. Those were formative understandings of it. And uh, and that and it also taught me about privilege and how that goes hand in hand with responsibilities. It taught me about uh, respect for uh, financial stability, sustenance, um, and all of that has come really uh, with a great has helped me enormously in my life as a curator, both for the artists that I work with, as well as for my creative pursuits. So I think uh, you know. Everything, like I said, has informed everything else. And uh, um, understanding and thinking about market trends, assessing viability, sustainability, um, you know, thinking about financial prudence, all of that I think are essential also when you are thinking about the art world in today's day and age, especially in the world of NFTs, because you have to have a market understanding as well as uh, an understanding about art and digital art in particular, especially as, as artists transition from um, analog system and extend it into their digital practices. So I'm going to leave it at that and, and let uh, you know others talk also, because I know we are short on time. 
Yes. So you, you know, you touched upon some very um, important points in your journeys, like from Carnegie Mellon to Wall Street. And, you know, I think many, like I have the same journeys, but I was in the Boston area from a tech to where I am today, you know, an intersection of so many, I touch upon so many different fields. So we as women play um, so many different roles. And in one thing that you touched upon is NFTs, which is kind of the buzzword, DAO, NFT, as in, you know, metaverse. So we, we have all the representation here of all those uh, keywords that we are talking about. So I'm going to touch upon a little bit on the NFT side of things. So from your experience as an international arts curators, um, you know, curator, where do you see is the future of NFTs? Um, well, I'm a techno optimist, like they say. So um, I think that, and I have seen several phases of the art world. I'm going to talk specifically about NFTs as it relates to the art world. And I've seen the definition of art change over multiple uh, decades. You know, there was a time when dance was only about movement, but then there were a lot of choreographers who explored stillness in their dance practices. And for me, um, you know, NFT is just, is a disruptor, firstly, in the art world. And so it's very exciting. Um, the future of NFTs is uh, lies in their ability to sort of give control of the art uh, practice as well as market for the first time to the artists themselves. And so the ability to, for artists to be able to raise funds and uh, to for artists to have a degree of ownership on their works that is cataloged over the years has is significantly different from art practices in the past. And so the future of NFTs, as far as I'm concerned, is very bright. Um, having said that, one does have to be um, a little pragmatic and cautious about the NFT bubble that is currently sort of, uh, that has been um, enveloping sort of the art world for the past, uh, I would say the past five or six years. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a, it is a bubble. It's, it's for all of us to realize that it is a bubble and that it will uh, eventually, uh, you know, market correct itself. And uh, with that understanding, I think uh, it's, it's, you know, if, if an artist enters into the NFT market, keeping that in mind, uh, you know, and it's not super speculative um, and thinks of the NFT world as just a different marketplace for their own art, uh, I think that, you know, we will see more and more artists sort of move towards that space, more collectors will have more, um, what's the word, will have uh, more faith in the in the marketplace uh, because it really does also ease access not just for the artists but also for um, you know people who are investors and for the traditional art market. but that that does need to happen we do need to see more faith in by artists more conventional artists um, in the analog in the digital space and we need to see more uh, traditional art uh, buyers and investors and collectors, uh, you know, start exploring the marketplace as mm. a means to sort of look and assess art. Right. So I am now going to move to, uh, because we touch upon artists and, you know, um, managing artists from different industry is a, is a daunting task. And that's that's the task of a producer. And we have a, a young entrepreneur and a producer here who has done wonders. And one of her, her production, one of her films is one of my favorites because I like Akshay Kumar a lot, is Bell Bottom. I've seen it multiple times. So I'm very honored to have Deepshika with uh, us here today. So Deepshika, you're a successful media entrepreneur. And now Puja Entertainment is the first uh, to create first of its kind meta immersive experience for uh, viewers, starting with recently announced your, your project uh, Bade Mia Chote Mia, which will be the first Indian film to be in the metaverse. What kind of reactions are you getting uh, so far uh, from uh, the Indian audience about it? And not even just Indian audience, but you know the diaspora at large. Thank you, Priya, for having me, firstly. 
And, uh, you know, I like to say that, you know, we are content creators. And, and for us, this exactly like what Mino said, that it's very important because we've also seen the way films have transitioned, you know, from the uh, from the big screen to your television. You've seen it going on to cassettes, then go on to, I mean, LED, LDs before LCDs, before that, then CDs, then USBs. And now you're watching it and consuming content digitally on your Amazons and, and Netflix and, you know, all the OTT platforms that we have. So so, you know, we've seen that transition and, and as content creators, I obviously believe that when you, I mean, when we enter the marketplace, I, for us, I think it was really important that you have to be able to create uh, content and have the kind of talent that can bring value to it. You know, like even there are a lot of new people out there today who don't make it to the big screen. And, you know, for them also, this is such a great opportunity because they can create content just like you have so many influencers come up in the Instagram space. There's going to be a whole lot of uh, people that will, you know, sort of bud now um, in this space. And, and I feel it's going to blur the lines globally. It's going to connect India to the UK, to the US, uh, China, Europe, you know, the world is just going to expand in terms of consuming Indian content and Indian creators. So yeah, it's been a great experience uh, so far. We launched Badimia Chotimia trailer on the Metaverse. Um, we did get a good response, but like I'm saying, people are still understanding this space. It's still emerging. It's fairly new. Uh, people still feel the metaverse, you have to really go in somewhere or what is it? You know, people are still not very sure of what this is, you know, like like it's as easy as, you know, clicking a button and entering a metaverse and you see a digital avatar of you. Or, you know, our kids do it all the time with Roblox or with all the other blockchain games that they play. So, you know, I think it's a transition. People are still getting there. But I think the pandemic has sort of fastened a lot of that process. Like a lot of us are now um, digitally quite more uh, savvy than what we were as well. I mean, no one thought that we could be sitting on a panel with different people. I mean, we used to always set it up in our office. We used to have video conferences. It's now at a click of a button. So I think it's 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 a very interesting market. It's developing rapidly. It's evolving. Uh, but a lot of it will also depend on the regulations that will come in play. Absolutely. And you mentioned about kids. So I will tell you, we did the world's first political, like my company, Idris, uh, political metaverse event just during Earth Day. And I got stuck with the mouse. And my, my I have two teenage boys and they were like, LOL. She doesn't even know how to navigate. I was, I just got stuck. I mean, you know, but but you know, I I know what, I hear what you're saying. So you mentioned about um, you know the education and the learning curve um, that is out there for people to you know understand that it's just like clicking a button and you be there. So in terms of um, NFTs, right, or NFT marketplaces uh, that are evolving. Uh, how do you see um, Indian film industry? I see there's a lot of momentum, uh, you know, that's that's happening even in that space. In months and years to come, what do you see is the future? I think it's going to help a lot of people. You know, there's so many things that we have. We have so many ideas, you know, that sometimes don't make it to the big screen. Or so many ideas that we ourselves are not sure whether we want to do this or not. I think with this, whether it's an actor, director, writer, um, you know, there's so many people involved in the process of filmmaking. All of them can put apart what they feel or their ideas out there in the world. And, and, and then you can have people back those ideas. And I think for us, because we're, I'm coming more from the content creation, more than, you know, just trading or marketplace or that sort. I think from that perspective, I think there's going to be a huge influx and going to help people a lot in, in those terms. Like, I know Mino is from the field of art, you know, but initially when NFT came out, right, um, about a year and a half, two years ago, when we heard of non-fungible tokens and you know figuring out what this was it was all about just quirky art i mean nobody thought it could translate um into you know say a small second of your film or a song or or some story idea and i think that was an extremely exciting prospect for me to see that it has anyways transitioned from then to now so for me i always tell people 2021 was all about understanding and you know just knowing the world of nfts but 2022 is all going to be about regulations trying to understand how we could actually you know participate or be part of it 
I think that's that's we're still going to be waiting. We're all in the wait and watch to see how this is sort of developing. We've gotten into the metaverse, uh, but we still have a lot to learn, see, understand. Uh, I mean, from global regimes also, like legal regimes also, right? Globally, are still waiting to figure out how this space is going to go. So yes, we're waiting to see. I'm sure something good is going to so, come out. So you have. put it so well right you know it's it's the various phases of it right you know so you know 2021 was like you know it was for more of understanding of things you know on, on a very uh, high level you know where it is 2022 is mostly the legalities everything around it and then you know as things progress and as they kind of start stabilizing for the world for for india as such you know or the south asian market it's more but what i from what hearing to maina and you know our view uh, what i am gauging and i am putting my senses together which i always believed but you know it's it's more now becoming a concrete belief is that you know it's all about collaboration it's all about brainstorming and it's all about community building and we do have a community builder that i'm going to speak at last because you know at the end of the day this game is about and anything you know and for anything for it to be a successful um, partnerships and communities and collaborations are key so we'll touch upon her but before that i would like to go to sanena so then you have you are based in boston but your work is um, you know south asia focused and beyond but uh, what i would like to start with is your career trajectory Um, you uh, transition from being a tech uh, person to the field of arts what especially being in a foreign land what promoted you to take that that you know um, i shouldn't say a risky step a passionate step because you know with tech it's always a cushion job right so i think you could you could say it's a risky step or um or uh, you know one in one line i can just say that what was i even thinking uh, but um, you know sometimes you are very really innocent you have some um, beginners luck and you think that uh, you take that plunge uh, when i uh, transition from tech I, you know I, i was talking to mine about we were discussing about new york and bombay but i uh, uh, came to us in 2000 on an h1 visa as a technical person uh, worked here Uh, and uh, continue to work in tech field uh, what had happened is that i um, was always writing had always been writing i'm born raised in kashmir and have lived in maharashtra that's where my in laws are from but uh, other than that, i'm a boston girl or a new york girl so i have had you know uh, my shoots have been all over the place so i have these different experiences and i used to continue uh, write all the time and my articles and poetry used to get published but it was all in the background it's all in the uh, what you call back burner uh, why was it in the back burner because, because i was looking at the you know we say buzurg of our community uh, of our field like galib or ts elliot they all had fashion jobs on the side because poetry if anything everyone consumes it but nobody wants to pay for it and i knew that uh, and as maina said you have to understand the economics of the art that you are a part of will it uh, run my household no that was not the case at that time but um, in 2013 i published my first book of poetry and when i was in the process of getting that published in india i was trying to decide what price should i sell it at and i realized that most of the people said you know keep 100 keep 150 but i wanted to uh, sell it at a higher price because i was also including pictures i was also including a recitation cd and a lot of people said oh no nobody will pay for it uh, but at that time uh, i many people had done it but you know we far and few that we wanted uh, i wanted to create an experience what i mean by that is when somebody opens a poetry book they they do have a picture to look at they do have a content to read they do also have a cd that they can listen to so it was like a multi disciplinary uh, experience that i was trying to bring bring it all together but still it was in a contemporary uh, it was still in a uh, now when i look back in the older form or probably web 2 form um i the power of my sales was still lying with uh, probably publishing houses later you know from cd we went to spotify and streaming uh, platforms but again the power is not with me the content creator the power is with these publishers now uh, what happened um, when we transitioned um when i started this work of uh, art uh, i immediately got opportunities to write for films 
Now, um, it was it was something that I in that field I have no experience. I don't even had at that time I had no contacts as well. But the opportunity came to me, and uh, the earning curve was a little longer for me, so I had to kind of quit my job because it was getting hard to do everything. Now there are pros and cons to that. If I would have held on to my job, maybe I would have slowly transitioned into art. But because I went full fledged, so I made a lot of mistakes quickly. But I also did a lot of work. You know, when I look back now, I realize that you know I do have two uh, feature films and you know illegal that we also was accepted at Oscars with other films in 2020. So all of that work would not have happened if I would not have plunged. Um, wholeheartedly and you know in a big way so so that uh, transition uh, was i don't know suicidal but i survived and here i am well i i don't see it as suicidal as i said right that's why i didn't call it risky i called it passionate because you know that that's all about about it what makes you happy and what what you can uh, give to the world from your art and craft. Now, you mentioned the various phases of how, you know, with your work as a poet, especially, you know, from, uh, you know, putting your work in a form of a book, then streaming, and then, you know, you also have now come into, maybe you're one of the very few poets who have uh, taken the medium of NFTs to promote your craft. Tell me why this medium. I think, um, as I said earlier, that uh, even with all of these other things I was doing, like to, last year, uh, I, you were part of that event. We I recited at the Capitol Hill when we were presenting uh, art from Kashmir. So all of that is great. My work as a producer, as a lyricist, and uh, as a poet is great. Uh, but still, um, the, as I said, the power is still not with me. I don't have uh, that much of power to monetize my content as I would want it to. to. Um, I, th- because of you, I got introduced to NFT. I know you had been talking about it for a while. And as Deepshik also said, a lot of people don't even know what it means, though I am from the tech world. This was something that I didn't want to think about. Uh, I thought Metaverse is something that my son plays games on blockchain so that's what it is so i'm not a game person um however um uh, when you introduced me to nft and i realized that it's um it is also um it gives an opportunity to collaborate with people from other fields like you know i can my poem is not only um available on Instagram, but I can also have some kind of music attached to it. I can also have some other uh, um, forms of which uh, forms of uh, how do I say uh, interdisciplinary um, attachments to it that makes it accessible to people with disabilities. Like I have a relative whose son is like a cousin whose son is blind. Now I would want him to see my poem, not just read, but experience it not somebody reading. How do I do that? Is that even a possibility? That was not a possibility 10 years back. The second thing is that um, even when, uh, look at look at the popular poets today, we talk about Rupi Kaur all the time. Now she did build her um, people that her, fo- her followers over Instagram and probably Facebook. But when it came to selling, she had to go back to books but that's not the case with nfts i do uh, it's probably not as great as it's for singers or probably for producers but today i do have an uh, opportunity to sell my nft worth uh, probably a salary which was not the case 10 years back so why not i mean i i'm sure there will be a day when we'll be going on a highway and there will be a billboard saying coming uh, poetry nft coming to a blockchain near to you so I'm looking forward to that day as well. Well, with with women like you uh, all, and you know uh, the power of community building, uh, this this is a dream that will be uh, you know realized soon. So talking about community building, Bubbly, um, I would like to come to you now as a community builder. Can you please explain to us what is the essence of uh, community building for NFT projects? Community building, I think community building is extremely important and incredibly important for any project, be it NFT, DeFi, game, Gamify or anything. Because today, uh, the, the entire Web3 space, you know, the adoption is not that 
uh, fast. Uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, for it, be it uh, your bla black swan events that have happened, or be it uh, you know, or, or be be it the legal uh, infrastructure today. Or, or also because you know um, a lot of transitioning because of the taxation is happening towards the dexes, which is the decentralized exchanges, where you know you see NFTs moving um, on on blockchain as well. So uh, all of this is gonna definitely take time. But a lot of NFT projects, like say a Crypto Punk or a Bodiat Club, uh, they have sold their their works in crores right and we've seen that uh, we've seen that happening and it's all on the blockchain people have bought them in crores and they have you uh, and, and it is it it to a certain extent i feel is going to be another asset class over a period of time the nfts and so that 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 gives it a more important reason why you know you need to build a community around it it's extremely crucial but not that easy precisely because you know uh, the community is scattered uh reaching out to people and the right kind of people you do not have that you know uh, one uh, uh, one shoes fit all kinds so you will have there, there are a lot of innovation and experiments happening in this space uh, the irls the the real life events have already started so that is that is explored i think to to the T right now in last two months, what I've seen is, uh, you know, at least 50 NFT events have happened only in Mumbai, right? So uh, IRLs are taking up Insta because uh, the announcement of Meta uh, and Insta on Polygon and Polygon being an Indian company, right? We, we I mean, every Indian knows about it. So that is another edge that, that has come. So that community is getting built. A lot of developers and artists are, you know, uh, doing these meetups uh, to explore this area. So, but reaching out to the right people through all that you can explore, you know, the paid or non-paid events, be the giveaways or the whitelist, be the rarities that you can get on your NFTs to, uh, you know, uh, being very, very clear on what your NFT project is going to be all about. What is it going to cater to? This is going to be the essence of building the community because uh, I, I was approached by a couple of NFT projects like, sell nahi ho raha hai, kya kare? But it, 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 it won't happen until and, and only a picture is not just going to be a selling point. It's going to be the team behind the project that is going to give credibility to it. So exploring that is going to be extremely important. The team behind the project needs to come out and talk about the project because still this place is anonymous. Uh, there is a lot of anonymity, of course, yes. <clears throat> But there has to be a face which will talk and which creates confidence and trust in people because trust today is going to be extremely important where you don't have any legal uh, bindings. And blockchain is permissionless, bo blockchain is borderless. So you have you are competing with global players today and, and, and it's, a, it's on the same platform. So the sense is just going to be be true and, and tell your people what is the project and find what is the right community that you want to connect with <coughs> i think that's going to be crucial that that's very interesting you said and you know you mentioned about trust right because who is the person or the team behind a, a abc project so apart from that and you know um, instagram is coming from way it can circulate or even you know twitter spaces are there and so many others so uh, you know so what are the components of building a successful uh, um, community? Like trust is there, I understand. But, you know, somebody came and told you, Yo, our, our marketplace is kind of, you know, not in a great shape. We want to kind of see how we can, you know, drive sales. What is that? You know, OK, fine. We have a great team. We have some, you know, budget to shell out. But still, what is that? Like, how do we become the next, uh, say, crypto kitties or, you know, the board apes uh, or even try to be somewhere where, you know, they are? If not them. Absolutely. Uh, I think every NFT project, you know, that is coming up is looking at, you know, aping the, the community building that uh, Board Yacht uh, or Crypto uh, Punks have built over a period of time. But they had that edge of Christie's mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and in, in their kitty already. 
right so they they had uh, that background but initially when uh, crypto punk came in uh, which was like two and a half three and a half four years back nobody knew about it but when they started promoting last one and a half year where you had this entire uh, you know people started talking about crypto uh, and nfts is where you know they started picking up and today they have reached a place where you know they they're not being touched at this point in time so the essence is to find the right community through various experiments that you do so the component uh, they, they wouldn't be uh, i wouldn't say that there is set rules but definitely you know deciding and and doing your homework on uh, simple as what blockchain you want to get into mm. or bring your project on you know what is your target audience are they because we all say that ethereum mm -hmm. is expensive and people are not going there which is definitely not the case because if it is a premium project they will go to ethereum because ethereum still provides that kind of security mm -hmm. right so which blockchain do you want to get your project on right what is your project what is, what is your project is it about uh nfts or just the art or is it beyond art what are you trying to get first is going to be extremely important because most often then what we've seen is that uh, an artist puts up a picture and would want that to be sold off immediately but the open sea and um, and the marketplaces may not help you there because you don't have any associations so where do you build those associations there are these blockchains uh, like the ethereums or the polygons avalanche and all of them they have great marketplaces already built go there yes it would need a little more to shell off but at least your project would get sold so be very clear on what you are looking for first once you get there you know there is going to be awesome um, opportunities out there but what do you want and that has not been that is not clear as of now with uh, a lot i mean we've seen uh amitabh bachchan nfts or sunny leoni nfts that have come but uh you know people couldn't buy them it just got crashed because everybody got online to buy them end of the day only few could get it so hmm. these are the small things you know in the marketplace that you need to keep in mind uh which which uh, is going to be extremely crucial are you providing that kind of security for me to to you know uh, keep my nft on your platform Hmm. All of that becomes extremely important. You know, these are. Uh, I I am a non techy, uh, non coder who joined. I mean, I've worked fifteen years in human resources with uh, multiple companies. Uh, I did my masters from Bajaj, then moved to corporates, worked with corporates for corporates and consulting for over, around fifteen years, and it's then moved to two thousand and seventeen is actually when I started my crypto investment, and. Uh, it's seven seven eight months is what my dav journey has been in january i went full time dav so uh, that's that's been my journey i've been a community builder of defi projects and and these are like big protocol defi projects where we've built communities uh, nfts uh, i have also uh, did, did done some projects with crypto punks and you know we've built communities fwb uh, where we worked to build community in india so a lot of things have happened but just the right target like these these guys were very clear on what their target audience is fwb knows that they are into uh, social so they know what kind of people they want to get uh, get uh, to hang on with uh, crypto punks knows that you know you need uh, elite class who would be able to talk about their um, uh, whatever they bought in their circle so they were very clear on what they want and other artists the the gap is so huge that you don't know where are you targeting is it the the which class are you targeting to mm. right so it normally the projects that are coming are you know targeting the masses i do and, and what has what is happening if the masses have it there is just no edge for me to talk about it so why would i then that barriers or that that gap is just being huge Mm -hmm. So it's and very then, interesting. What no, no, continue. Then I'll I'll add to it. I was just saying is that you know these projects um, have have seen values where you know they want mass adoption. They've come in like a, a fifty and a hundred dollar project for, uh, but then the systems have crashed. 
So because they're films of cash, not many people could, and then you would see their discords <clears throat> getting abusive, their discords getting bashed, and then the then the community managers just leave and and they stop answering. That's what mm. happened. It's it's very interesting. So there is definitely a big divide, as always in all on all uh, walks of life between uh, the classes and the masses. You know how how that that works. But you mentioned about Discord, and I'm just looking at the time. We still have ten minutes, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take one more question with all of you. Um, so um, I'm going to start again, Vanita, with you. You mentioned about Discord. So how has Discord become a premier community project channel? and our projects uh, discord as a channel uh, you know as as a as a tool has been able to provide the kind of uh, requirements that this particular space needs you need a, a, a platform you know just that can provide multi channels uh, that 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 all comes under one uh, under one umbrella uh, it is open communication of course you can gate it or you can keep it open so that that, that gives you the flexibility there has so that has led to its option and today it's become equivalent to a web3 or a crypto uh, tooling you know so that's where you know it has been an acceptance so yes uh, a lot has been spoken that uh, web3 needs another uh, channel or another tool right now because discord has been is becoming a little complicated and we need simpler tools because when initially things come you know simple uh, complication is something that you know attracts you but then later on you realize the simplicity is much better because <laughs> you, you cannot spend so much time just learning these tools and then seeing that they're going to be ab abandoned right. so that that's the reason why i think discord has picked up and you know slowly something new would definitely come in. Well, we'll, we'll, while, while we are adopting ourselves to this card, we'll see what, what's coming out in market. Now, I would quickly like to go to Maina. See, as a creative uh, talent aggregator, how do you educate um, the artists and the creators in your community about blockchain technology? Because there's so much out there, right? I, I think it's a daunting task. How do you do that? Um, well, I've been lucky so far because um, a lot of the people, a lot of the artists that I've been working with are uh, very digitally native, like they say. So, um, and, you know, I curated a project for Sotheby's uh, with India's first NFT artist there, uh, Raghava KK. Uh, I'm part of a DAO uh, that's headed by Tara Stein, um, you know, who's the founder member for TEDx. Um, and uh, we recently did a show, actually two of our shows that we have recently done, one that is an AI-based uh, artist solo show called Harshit Agarwal, and uh, another uh, exhibition called uh, Techni Disruptors. Both of them, we've sold out, uh, almost sold out, and we've sold out to very well-known institutions, museums. Um, and so, but at the same time, I mean, going back, uh, before I talk about how we educate artists, um, I'd like to talk about what you guys were just talking about, which is the marketplace and what do you do to make uh, NFT projects successful. And I think uh, the best thing to do is to treat it exactly like the conventional market that uh, it seeks to address. So if it's a platform for cinema, you reach out to people who are interested in cinema. If it is a platform, uh, if it's an NFT project that involves art, you reach out to art lovers. Um, the platform itself is just another means to get uh, access to the art, uh, to view the art and uh, to create the art. But uh, the basic product that you are trying to distribute is still the same. So. Uh, you know, I also heard you guys talk about how we need to sit and wait to watch what happens. But actually, I think that this is a really exciting time for all of us because uh, this is a market that we get to shape. You know, it's not something that we need to sit and watch. We get to shape what this market is eventually going to be. And that is what is most exciting about this world. Um, we decide, we, you know, all of us who are in, in the Web3 world, um, we are champions of trying to get people to understand that this is not that different 
art still remains art. The artist's vision is something that is now digital, but it could be, there are so many different uh, sort of materials to create art in. Technology is just one tool that allows an artist's expression, but uh, it doesn't change the inherent value of what that art uh, enables. So you reach out like, um, you, you reach out to the community that is most interested in it and you uh, educate them about um, and, and drive that faith. So I think as more established gallerists, as more established artists, as more established or unestablished, uh, you know, but younger artists, as more and more people start using the NFT world, I think that trust is going to be established. I mean, uh, the uh, Netflix was a disruptor in many ways. And I feel, and look at where Netflix is today, you know, and in the same way, I feel that with the art world, I think that eventually uh, it doesn't need that much convincing either. I mean, what I generally do to people who are new to NFT is I, I try to talk about things that have parallels in the real world uh, that are very close to what uh, the NFT blockchain um, structure is like. So I explain that, you know, just like you have a house that is a real, uh, you know, that is a material thing, but you have a house deed that helps you with ownership. And the house deed is not the same thing as the house. But in many ways, uh, you know, the value of it is in the house state. You need property papers to own property. So kind of uh, uh, talking about Ethereum or talking about currency as currencies that you would see. I mean, I think digital literacy is a big thing. Um, you know, more artists are, um, I've been asked whether, you know, as we're talking about this place developing, whether artists uh, do have access to digital literacy, but, and maybe it is, it, you know, it's going to be some time before all artists have the equal amount of access. I'm sure that it's not the same. There are some more who are more privileged than others, but uh, the regular art market is also not necessarily equitable. So artists have barriers to entry to get access to a gallerist or to a gallery ecosystem or to, uh, you know, a certain a class or, you know, um, of collectors. So, I mean, all things kept the same. This is just another setup that allows for a transaction to happen. It's a medium. It's 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 safe. It's reliable. Um, it's emerging. Um, you know, and we are all heading towards a more digital world. I mean, COVID's definitely taught us that, like Pichika said. So I really do think it's a matter of time and all of us are going to sort of be educating people and uh, catalyzing more and more faith in this particular system. Thank you so much, Romaina. This was uh, so well put. Um, so, you know, now we have only two minutes remaining. I'm very mindful of time. So um, I'm going to ask a common question to uh, Deepshika and Sanena. Um, so uh, please be very crisp in your answers. Um, what is the word of advice for um, aspiring female entrepreneurs in this space? Um, what, would, what would be your words of wisdom? Deepshika, over to you. You know, I would say there's no fixed formula as such. Follow your dreams, understand it as much as possible, keep reading about it. I mean, literally, as we finish this conference, something new has already come up on the internet for us to understand and learn about this space. So just keep reading, evolving, follow your dreams, and just believe in yourself. If you think something is, is going right uh, and you should invest in this or you should go for this in Web3, you must go for it. And that's my advice for that. Wonderful. Selena? Yeah, I think in addition to what all these wonderful creators have said, um, don't be scared to be the face of your product and don't be scared to ask money for your project. So I think these are the two things that I I find challenging and I would like to see people overcoming that. Thank you. 
very, very well said. You know, these are the two things that are extremely important. And um, I urge that, you know, more uh, more females, um, you know, listening to us uh, and this uh, wonderful panel uh, come forward and, uh, you know, be part of this ecosystem. So as you know, we are on time with uh, this discussion. This could go on and on because, you know, there's so much that has come from it, from an education side, from a film side, from the art side from a communities building side i mean there's so much to discuss but in the time that we have right now um uh, i'm just going to give my closing remarks and i want to thank all of you for taking the time to join uh Horace's, uh, uh today um, at this very meaningful discussion uh this was a very in insightful session on how women are shaping cutting edge technological evolution, making the tech community so more inclusive than ever before, because inclusion in is key. So in the past few years, women are steering uh, technology towards a very humane pursuit. And today's session just demonstrated that with each speaker conviction, uh, with with each speaker's conviction and commitment uh, to this growing space. So thank you all for joining. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks us. So thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.